Good morning, everyone. So when I was a little girl, my grandfather used to tell me stories about a young boy and his dog. And they would always go walking in the forest and have these amazing adventures. They would go exploring, but they always seemed to get lost. And they always ended up spending the night in the forest. But my grandfather would tell me how the little boy would cover himself with leaves, lay his head on the dog's body, and they would sleep and the dog would protect him. It was such a beautiful story. I loved fairy tales as a child. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Hansel and Gretel, Cinderella, Rumpelstiltskin, the Three Little Pigs, Goldilocks, all great stories written by great authors. When I began to read and, and read seriously, my favorite author was a lady by the name of Enid Blyton. I loved reading the famous five. I think I read every single one of them. Mallory Towers. In fact, yesterday morning, I saw one of our primary school students walking in with a book, and it was Mallory Towers by Enid Blyton. I loved the, Claire, the, the twins at St. Clair. I enjoyed books, and I enjoyed Enid Blyton's books because they were filled with adventure. I loved the characters she used and often could identify with some of them and would wonder how I would react in certain situations and wished I could join in their adventures. When I was at university, as part of my studies, I had to write a children's story. Let me tell you, it was disaster. It was too long, I had too many characters, I was told it was more like a movie script because there was so much dialogue, and I discovered that it was hard work to be an author, and there was a lot you had to take into consideration. And so, what I did, I consulted our dear friend Google, and I found a few tips on how to, how to write a book and be a great author. So the first tip I got was find your big idea. What is your book all about? Be creative, be exciting. The next tip was research your genre. So is it going to be fiction or non-fiction? Non-fiction where it's all about facts and information. Fiction, is it going to be a thriller, a romance, sci-fi, a mystery, a fairy tale? You've also got to start your book off strong. Grab the reader's attention from the very first sentence, from the very first chapter. You need to create an outline. So it's like when your teacher says to you in languages before you write your essay, you have to do a rough draft. So prepare an outline. How are you going to start it? What does it look like in the middle? And how are you going to end it? A good author has to focus on substance. Your characters, who they are and what they bring to the story, your theme, your plot. The author also has to think of the reader first. Make sure that it's something that readers would like. What would the reader need in order to continue reading to the end of the book? Another great tip was don't rush the ending. Make sure that it's realistic and a solid ending. And try tying up all those loose ends and bring them all to one great ending. The last tip that Google gave was publish your book. Now, I have not gone and written any other books and I don't plan to. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You see, Jesus has written the book of your life. He's written the beginning, the middle, and the end. He's the author of your book. No one else has written your story, although there are some that may try and interfere. There's an enemy 
who's trying to destroy your story. He's a liar and a thief, and he often tries to rewrite your story. But your story's already been written by Jesus, the greatest author of all. I think Google may have gotten their tips from Jesus because way before time, Jesus began writing your book, your story. He had a big idea and his big idea was to save the world and to save you. To save you from the penalty of sin, to free you from carrying that heavy burden. His big idea was to offer forgiveness for all your sin, past, present and future. Taking your sin from you, paying the price for your sin, so that death would not keep you in the grave. And you could walk this life with freedom and in freedom. His big idea was to allow you to live on this earth whilst being empowered supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. His big idea was to make you great, even though you are small, to do amazing things in and through you. The genre of Jesus' book about you is completely non-fiction. Everything that happens is real and true. He created an outline, but it wasn't a rough draft. He had a purpose when he wrote your book. He had a plan and it was perfect. It was unique. He knew you before you were born. He knew you and loved you and wrote your story. Oh yes, it started off strong. He created you in your mother's womb beautifully, fearfully and wonderfully with a divine plan and purpose. Any book written about you has to be good, right? Hmm, I thought so. He has placed amazing characters in your book. Some great and no, some not so great. His theme for your book is freedom, power, salvation, authority, forgiveness, acceptance, adoption, perfect love, and his plot to rescue you from the enemy who prowls around, to fight your battles for you, and to allow you to be the champion. He's definitely put the reader first. The readers of your book will see all that he can and do in and through you. They will see your highs, they will see your lows, they will see your weaknesses and they will see your strengths. But they will also see Jesus do amazing things in your story as you walk with him and fix your eyes on him. The ending of your book has certainly been written. However, your story is not finished. The best is yet to come. Jesus, being the author of your book, could be the could not be the could there could not be a better author than him. He's planned, plotted, and created awesome adventures in your life story. A story full of joy and abundance. However, your story probably will have some challenges. And it's not always going to be happy and easygoing. The authors told each one of us that we're going to face trials. There are going to be storms. There is an enemy. But you see, it's in those times that our author perfects our faith. He uses everything, good and bad, for our good. And he uses everything to strengthen and perfect your faith. Jesus has promised to be beside you from the beginning, in the middle, and right past the end of your life. 
He's the creator of your story. So he knows what lies ahead. He will navigate you through the path of life and lead you every step of the way. He knows when struggles are close by and so he'll prepare you. He knows when fear will come knocking at the door and so he will equip you. He knows when tragedy is going to strike. He's your counselor and your comforter. He knows when giants are going to surround you and so he will give you the weapons you need to defend them or defend yourself. He's promised that he'll be with you. Through it all, he is going to help you overcome. He will give you peace, joy, wisdom, strength, and all you have to do is trust him and keep your eyes fixed on him. He will fight your battles for you. And after each battle, you will be the champion. You will be the hero of your own story. Just keep your eyes fixed on him. So most of us know the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But imagine if Snow White decided that she actually didn't want to follow the story of the author. Imagine if Snow White thought, well, I'd rather be Little Red Riding Hood. How do you think that could have ended? Well, if Snow White wanted to be Little Red Riding Hood, she probably could have been eaten by the wolf and no one would have seen anything or heard anything of her again. And poor old Granny, what would have happened to her? What about Cinderella? If Cinderella had not followed the storyline of the author, if she decided that she was going to give up, life was too hard, she wasn't going to put up with her miserable stepmother and her awful stepsisters, and she just gave up, what would have happened to her? She could have possibly landed up with Winnie the Pooh and not her fabulous prince. Let's take Batman. What if Batman did nothing for people? What if he sat back and it was all about him? What if he did his own thing and ran away from, from things that were scary and difficult? What would he have driven? Who would have had helped him? Your story has been written before the beginning of time. Your author, so creative and so kind, has planned and purposed your story perfectly. There are going to be struggles. There are going to be valleys in your story. And there may be times when you feel that the author has forgotten you. You may feel that his promises are not true. You may feel that he's rejected you. You may even feel that he doesn't exist. And the author understands. He knows what you feel. He knows your heart. But he's promised that he will be with you through it all. Because as I said, it's through your struggles and it's through the challenges that your faith becomes stronger, that you become wiser. Your character is built and shaped. And he's continually perfecting your faith. He wrote your story and he's published it. It's written on his heart and the palm of his hand. And it's a bestseller in his eyes. He knows the end and he knows what you need to do in order to get to the end. If he says be still, be still. If he says do not fear, don't fear. If he says be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. At the end of every famous five book, Dick, Julian, Georgina, Anne, and Timmy the dog always survived. They were always rescued and they always solved the problem within an amazing adventure. In Mallory Towers, conflicts were settled, friendships were formed, and lessons were learned. The books I read and the stories I heard normally always ended really well. 
fairy tales mostly ended with the prince and his bride riding off into the sunset to spend the rest of their lives together in perfect harmony. Your story ends that way too. It's already been written that way, the way Jesus wrote it. Your author really knows you. Your author loves you with an everlasting love. He wants only the best for you, all through your life, right to the very end. Jesus, the author of you and perfecter of you and your faith, is coming back to fetch you. He's coming back on a white horse and the trumpet is going to sound for all to hear and for all to see. And if you just keep your eyes fixed on him and follow his story, his plan for your life, one day you will hear your author say, well done, my good and faithful child. Come and enter into my kingdom where we can spend eternity together. Your book is one of the greatest stories because I know the author. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for being the author of our lives. Thank you, Jesus, that the story of each one of our lives is beautiful and perfect and we do not do this alone. Thank you that in and through everything, you are with us and you are perfecting our faith. May our lives, may our stories be a reflection of that. May the world see you in and through our lives. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would give us the strength and the courage and the wisdom and the endurance to persevere through those challenging times. And thank you for your promise that you've already won those battles and we will be champions because of you. Bless you, Jesus, as you bless us.